Original Appearance Manufacturing was founded in Ames, Iowa, and our flagship product is Quick Covers, a brand of slip-on rocker panels that make rusty trucks look as good as the day they drove off the lot. This is the story of how we went from an idea to a prototype to a full-fledged business. We'll give you a peek behind the scenes and share the ups and downs of starting a manufacturing business from scratch right here in the U.S. We are OAM and you're watching Made in the States. We started on the floor of an auto body shop. People were coming into the body shop asking us to fix their rust, but they didn't want to spend the money for a full-fledged repair. Looking at ways to repair it. Obviously there's ways of getting it professionally done. Um, the problem with that is usually the rust will come back anyway, and it's really expensive. So after years of initial testing with different ideas, we created the first plastic prototype of what is now Quick Covers back in 2016. We were selling them to customers at our shop, and it was going well, so we decided to launch an e-commerce website in 2018. When that first website sale came through, we were ecstatic. <laughs> I know, it's about authentic. But we were pretty quickly humbled and shocked when we saw the shipping price. And then we go to ship it, and they're like, that'll be $180. 100, and, that's, and we literally look at each other and we're like, we don't have a business. Yeah, like, we, we literally thought it was over here's where it stopped. <laughs> yeah. But over time, we were able to get better rates based on volume. As our sales increased, so did our need for more space. So we left the body shop where we had started and moved to the corner of a small warehouse. We hired our first employee, but quickly realized that our manual production process, especially the trimming and sanding of every piece by hand, wasn't going to scale. So we looked into outsourcing. We contacted other manufacturers, but they didn't like our homemade tooling and said they would only work with us if we could provide high volume tooling. We talked to tool and die shops, pattern makers, even hired remote engineers. We eventually got our high volume tooling, but the results were unsuccessful. The parts didn't fit right, and after a handful of attempts to modify the tooling, we had to cut our losses. We'd spent tens of thousands of dollars and wasted a ton of time just to end up right where we started. We learned the hard way that you can't outsource innovation. We're a startup. We need things fast, we need them cheap, and we need them good. And from what I'm learning, it, the only way to get that is to do it yourself. In a last ditch effort, we decided we were going to keep making our parts in-house and figure everything out on our own. At the end of 2019, we bought a CNC machine, even though we had no idea how to use it. And then we found out we didn't even have enough electrical supply to run it. We ran into an issue. We actually realized that we have to bring all new electrical service into the building that's upgraded. That came with about a $22,000 price tag and potentially can't happen until spring when the ground is thawed. So for the time being, this is a giant paperweight. But we knew this machine would eventually help us scale by speeding up that trimming process. The goal was to use this machine to trim the plastic parts instead of doing it by hand. Despite the large price tag and our renewed commitment to manufacturing, it would end up being over a year before it was cutting production parts. We purchased our third thermal former in 2020. This machine was bigger and faster, which allowed us to more than double our production. But with the CNC offline, we were still trimming parts manually. And as we added more people, we quickly ran out of space. In order to have enough room for the new workstations, we had to move all of our finished inventory to another facility. Our CNC was sitting idle until we were finally able to upgrade our electrical capacity. And in July of 2020, with a now fully powered CNC machine waiting for them, we welcomed our first in-house engineers. <laughs> Alex quickly got to work figuring out how to run the CNC, while Luke added much needed automation to the thermoformers to speed up their cycle times. We recently added another engineer in April of 2021. Jonathan is working on some really cool stuff, but we're gonna save that for later. After six months, Alex finally got the CNC up and running, but we realized, I realized, that I had given him crap CAD data. This basically stopped all progress in his tracks.
The final piece to the puzzle came in the form of a 1980s cell phone. Actually, a 3D scanner that just looks like a 1980s cell phone. And with this tool, we were able to capture detailed data from our tooling and from vehicles to ensure that we were feeding the CNC with accurate data. We're getting really close to getting the CNC into production, but we continue to be short on space. The global supply shortage of plastic didn't help, and while we were able to stock up on material, that required us to rent yet another warehouse space. The next several months will be very interesting. Can we get the CNC into operation? What happens if we run out of space again? Will we be able to afford to launch new products? The only thing we know for sure is that everything will change. Today, or I guess yesterday, our AC kind of crapped out, but in the weirdest way. Nothing will go smoothly. I don't know, it just shot apart. And our best will have to be good enough.